My name's Randy Lee and I'm a freelance tree surgeon. As a freelancer, I get more than my fair share of large and difficult removals. This beautiful pine tree had grown up over 150 feet. Unfortunately, it made the residents nervous and they wanted it removed. I tie one end of my climbing line to my belt. The other end goes up over the first branch and back down to the ground crew. As the ground crew pulls down on the rope, the line pulls me up into the tree. From here, I free climb to the highest point of the tree. Next, I hang a rope that I'll use to lower the branches off of. We call that the lowering line. Using the lowering line to remove branches, I work my way down through the tree. Taking multiple branches at once is a huge time saver. Once the lowest branch is removed, I work my way back up the tree, taking branches as I go. The goal here is to get two branches on the back of the tree to come around to the front of the tree. Stringing branches together allows me to hang the two back branches from a side branch. Now, when I cut the side branch, all three branches swing to the front of the tree and the ground man can lower them to the landing zone.
Cut, hold, and throw is a technique I use often. This knot is called the running bowling. It's one of the five knots I use most often. One of the great things about using old school methods is that all you need is a rope and of course the knowledge of about five different knots and how the techniques work. Once the branch is secured with the running bowling, the ground man can then pull down on the other end to tighten the lowing line and get ready for me to make the cut. If you'd like to learn more about the five most useful knots, please click the link in the description below or visit my website at ropesriggingandtrees.com. For this branch, I'm keeping the lowering line loose and up away from the saw with my left hand. Then I cut the branch with my right hand. Once the branch is released, I move the saw away and use my left hand to position the lowering line in the crotch I want to lower from. I knew that dropping this huge top would create a bouncy ride. But the ground man did a great job letting the piece run all the way to the ground, and that lessened the shock load. This is called a box cut. I use it to steer the piece of wood in a particular direction. Getting a lanyard around a large store can be difficult. 
I hold the lanyard up high over my left shoulder with my right hand. Then developing a rhythmic swing, I throw it around my back. As it goes around my back, I lower my right hand to my waist. This ensures that the lanyard will come back to you around waist height on the other side of the stalk. Piecing down the stalk is the most difficult part of the job for a few reasons. First, I've been up in this tree for almost four hours, so my gas tank is almost empty. Second, standing on the stalk creates a lot more pressure on the hips than hanging in the saddle does. Third, you're leaning out as far as possible to handle a big heavy saw and that puts intense pressure on the feet. When the box cut is accurate, oftentimes the discarded piece will fly right out. To avoid standing on the stalk and taking another piece, sometimes it's easier to come down to the ground and make the last cut up high. Doing this makes the piece you're dropping smaller and more likely to fit into the target area. I use old school techniques because they're safe and efficient, and at the age of 65 they've served me well. Even if you never climb a tree in your life, you'd be amazed all the things you can do with a rope. Just knowing a few knots and understanding some basic technique goes a long way. If you'd like to find out more about that, please click the link below entitled, Learn the Five Most Useful Knots. You might have noticed I didn't wear a helmet on this job. If you'd like to know why, please click the other link below. This link will take you to the tree work page on my website. Scroll down till you see the picture marked helmet. This link can be found below in the description. The techniques you saw in this video took a lifetime to acquire, and I've got a scar on this body for every mistake I've ever made. But it was never the techniques that failed. It was always my application of them. Old school techniques never fail. What fails is how you use them. It could very easily be a fatal mistake to attempt any of these techniques without extensive training and a total understanding of exactly how they work. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you'd like to see more, please click the subscribe button below. I look forward to your questions and comments. Thanks for watching.